Deep in the Nigerian rainforest, there was once an immense kingdom surrounded by a system of defensive walls and ditches. Built during the Middle Ages, this great African kingdom was larger than many contemporary kingdoms of its time, such as Baghdad, Cairo, or Rome. Yet, nothing of this vast kingdom survived today save for its fortification wall. A structure so enormous that its construction was a feat that was bigger in scale than that of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The BBC calls it Africa's largest single monument. I'm currently in Djibouti. I'm going to explore some Boyeredo. I had it's a long hike and it's going to be a little stressful, but I'm prepared for it. That's what I came here to do. So let's go. This is the beautiful landscape. You can see everywhere is just there. Just there. Oh my god. To join in. Archaeologists believe the Eredo was built about a thousand years ago to serve as a boundary wall for the ancient kingdom. The kingdom itself is very little known other than the connection to Biliki Susungbo, its powerful ruler and a childless widow whom the locals believe was none other than the legendary Queen of Sheba. Shubon's Eredo lies only an hour's ride away from the metropolitan city of Lagos. Yet, few Nigerians, let alone outsiders, have heard of it, and fewer still have visited it. Interest in the Eredo flared up briefly about two decades ago when a team of Nigerian and British archaeologists, headed by Dr. Patrick Darling, successfully mapped the structure. Since then, the Eredo has sunk back into the forest and faded into scientific and media oblivion. Darling estimated that Sumbon's Eredo covers 6,475 square kilometers and consists of more than 500 interconnected communal enclosures and that most of the complex was built progressively over a 650 year period up until the late 15th century, when much of the area was conquered by the Benin Empire. It is also suggested that the wall system not only served as a defensive mechanism, but was built as a way to unify an area of diverse communities into a single kingdom. Shubon's Eredo consists of a 16,000 km long series of earthworks naturally camouflaged by patches of moss and partially concealed within the rainforest of the region. The builders of Sungbon's Eredo excavated 3.5 million cubic meters of earth to create a 165 km long ditch with steep vertical walls and a raised inner embankment that encircles an area larger than Greater London. The surviving archaeological evidence confirms signs of settlement around Eredo from the Neolithic period, with some indications of human activity as far back as the Late Stone Age, dating the monument has been inconclusive, but one of the generally accepted dates come from a radiocarbon study that suggests either 8070 AD or AD 6070 to 1050. Shugban's Eredo's fortification is essentially a moat and an earth wall alongside it, that together run in a circle for a length of about 160 kilometers, enclosing an area of more than 4,000 square kilometers. The Eredo's earthen bank rises 70 feet in the air from the bottom of the moat. Its walls are unusually smooth, but now covered with moss and creepers. Overhead, 
3 axe crosses from either side turning the moat into dark green tunnel through the forest. Adjacent to the earthwork within Okeri is a sacred groove that according to local oral tradition houses the tomb of the legendary Queen of Sheba from Biblical and Quranic texts. Who the Okeri people refer to as Bilikisu Sungbon, which gave rise to the name of Sungbon's Eredo, meaning Queen of Sheba's Embankment. Another popular myth connects the contemporary Jebu clan and the Eredo to a fabled wealthy and childless widow named Bilikisu Sungbon. Oloye Bilikisu Sungbon essentially ordered this to be built as a monument for her greatness because she was childless. In traditional society, a child is seen to be the ultimate preservation of your legacy. Because she didn't have a child, she wanted something to be built as a reminder of her stature as an accomplished woman. In addition to this, a grave is believed to be located in Okeri, a town in a Muslim area just north of the Eredo. Pilgrims of Christian, Muslim and traditional African religions worshippers usually trek to this holy site in tribute to her. While there is no archaeological evidence to support the oral tradition connecting the monument to the Queen of Sheba, the sheer size of Shugbon's Eredo is a testament to the massive organized processes of centralized communities and the sophistication of the early African societies involved in the construction. Shugbon's Eredo mirrors the construction process of similar defense systems found in Nigeria, including the ancient walls of Ileife, Ilesha, and the infamous Bini walls called Ya in the Bini language. The latter was at one time the largest man-made structure in the world, with 6,500 kilometers of rampants ranging in size from shallow trenches to gigantic 20-meter high walls, once surrounding the ancient Bini city. Even though Shungbon's Eredo has been listed as the UNESCO Heritage Site since November 1995, it is still not on the radar of many history lovers or even widely visited by Nigerians. The site is a testament to the early engineering innovation of an indigenous population and speaks of one woman's legacy, vision, prowess and ambition that stood the test of time. A pre-colonial architectural and engineering feat Shugbon's Eredo must face future preservation challenges, including environmental changes, tourism footfall, daily wear and tear to the ramparts, while balancing the need to educate, stay open and remain accessible to all. Lastly, the best time to visit Shugbon's Eredo is during the dry season, as the trail leads deep into the forest. Loose, comfortable clothing and walking boots are recommended. Avoid visiting this place during the Easter period, as this is when the pilgrims flock to the area to pay tribute to Biliki Susungbon. It is essential to hire a tour guide, as the Eredo is virtually impossible to discover without the aid of someone who knows it all. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. So guys, that's it. That is the Great Wall of the Yoruba Kingdom. I'm heading to Kerry now to the supposed burial place of Queen Sheba. Let's go find out why people think she is buried there, if she is truly buried there or not. Let's go check it out.